Good morning. Welcome. Big 16. It's happening. We're here. Class uh, Classes are on their way and uh, the great team at Craft Alive have got it all under control. <laughs> and uh, I'm just here on my page just going to show you how I'm going to do this with baskets. So I'm just getting my computer up and running and um, I'm going to move the camera in a second. And yeah, we'll get into it. That's the way to do it. So I'm going to wait for a couple of you to hop online. Um, some might already be in classrooms and might not be here. So we'll just get going in a minute. And uh, I just want to make sure I know that you can see what I'm looking at. That you can see everything that you're supposed to see by having the computer going at the same time. That's why I do it. <clears throat> and uh, just getting it going. Hi Heather, how you going love? It's all happening. Hi Joan. There we go. Okay, Deb, how are you love? Um, Alright, so <clears throat> the other week I showed you these templates. Funny looking things they are, a set of three. And uh, this is the demo for these. So these are the basket weave templates. Um, I have them in packs um, of the three for 25 if anyone's after them. Hi, Tanya, and hi, Julie. So, uh, Lynn Moody, g'day, Heather E, hello, hi, hey, hey, Lynn Marshall as well. Um, now, this is one of them I've cut out already. Now, what you have to do is, which I'm not going to go through the cutout thing because it's pretty basic, one's going to go one way. And then you got to have one going the other way, obviously. I use batiks. There's no right and wrong side. Doesn't seem to matter. Um, hi, uh, hi, Vita. Hi, Coralie. Now, the other one I have here is the yellow one. So I've got the two sides. This one I have already stitched around the edge. Now, what I did was, because I didn't have any fusible... Hi, Deb. Maureen, um, I didn't have any fusible batting. So what I did was used a bag batting and I put um, Blyzer fix or Tilda fix, whatever fusible webbing on either side of the batting and adhered, ironed on the fabric to the batting on either side. So it made like a sandwich. So I've got the wadding, batting in the middle and then the wadding, uh, the uh, fabric on the other side. And that just held them all together nicely. Why not? Then what I've done is, with this one, I've already zigzagged around the edges of it. Otherwise, you have an open edge. Okay. So nice nice and zigzag. So I'm going to show you how I did the zigzag. All I did was draw on the actual fabric, these. Now, if you've got one side of fabric, not, not batik, so it's only one way, you're going to have to remember to, to turn your your thing around um, otherwise you'll unless you've got the same fabric and all that sort of jazz otherwise you're going to have them both going the wrong, right way uh, same way um, so you have one one way and one the other way so that they interlock with each other this is the medium size that I'm using and I'm going to move the camera and show you how to do the ziggy zag now bear with me because I'm going to fight the camera for a second and I so machine. <laughs> um, so let me just move that down so you can see what I'm doing. See if it'll zoom in a little. There we go. All right, without falling over, that'd be great. Okay, so in my top thread, I've got a yellow. In the bottom, I've got this creamy color. It should just blend in nicely. It doesn't matter which side of the fabric you decide to go on. I'm going to start on a straight edge, and I'm putting, I've put my zigzag at four and a half mil wide, so 4.4, and I've got it as close as 0.5, so half a mil close. So they're very close. Um, I've also got the speed of my machine up fairly high because I don't want to be spending three hours doing doing this. I put my needle when I when I put the foot down. I put make sure that the needle is going to start on the outside of the fabric, and then skip over. So I have my fabric on the edge where that needle is going to be, and I put my needle in the down position up. It's going to do a bit of a knot first because it wants to. That's just the 
machine and it's going to go over one and then cross all right so then it starts a zigzag now all I'm going to do is starting halfway through that straight strip I'm going to come down I'm going to go across on a bit of um, come across and then I'm going to come up but when I go down it's uh, where I stop my needle is the important part so I'm going to come down here so I'm just making sure I'm keeping my needle on the outside of the fabric so it literally hits the side of that that cut bit then I want to make sure when I stop at this point I want to put my needle on the inside on the left hand side pick it up turn it and then just go across a couple of stitches and then make sure my needle is on the outside on the right hand side turn it and then off I go again go all the way to the top moment the needle is on the left hand side I need it to be on the right hand side the outside of the fabric so lift the needle up move it over which means that this is going to be free see how it's free it can move anywhere but all I do is guide it to the edge of the needle lift it up and I'm going along that little straight bit there I'm on the corner and just stitch down And I stitched over the corner of the other side so I've gone from there to there I've got my needle on the right hand side pick up I pick the foot up a little just so I can move the fabric around and with the needle right at the edge the top edge of that piece of fabric there I'm going to start stitching now one thing you might notice is that the foot I'm using is a um, walking foot the reason for the walking foot is because you've got to go over so many layers um, you won't go over it with your normal foot I finished one and almost finished oh uh, good good Sue they're not hard the finishing off is entirely up to you as in you know how you want to join the top of it A lift up push over and keep that needle on the edge I was a bit off there it just makes my zigzag smaller turn it around and off you go again and you're just going to repeat that the whole way around left hand side when I stop to do that little cross bit to cover this um, sort of um, what's the name uh, that little V point there just so it covers that bit of um, open stitching uh, open fabric that earlier you could actually use just a wadding and maybe um, some then some flies fix or something or tilde fix um, but it might be a bit softer um, another one that might work is buckram buckram is um, another quite a sturdy stabilizer but again you need to you need to um, you need to have it adhered you could also spray glue if that's easy morning Jody Oops. 
of those. Stop. And it, like if I just went over the edge, then it, it doesn't matter. You just stop the machine and continue on. It's not going to hurt anything. If you want the edge of this thicker, like the, the stitching closer, you can go over it a second time. It just uses up a lot of thread, that's all. It took me about five, maybe ten minutes. I think the cutting out was the longest part. <laughs> five, ten minutes to do the sewing. Good morning, Jimmy. You like the double sided fusible bag foam the best? Yep, okay, cool. It's good to know. This one is not the foam, this is just a um, bag batting. Foam will give it a different feel as well. Good morning, Christine. Had to go hunting, no notification. Ah, tell you, that for Facebook to be a social media thing, it's not very social, is it? <laughs> who don't have these templates I still have templates available I've got them right next to me um, and I can order more if I do run out so the actual templates are only 25 for a set of three and you use them over and over and over again okay so it's not a, just a once-off use um, you definitely get lots and lots of use out of it this is the first time I've used this machine since she came back from the doctor she had to go and I haven't even given her a test run. I just ran her. Uh, do you set a bag pattern? Um, bag pattern. Which um, sell the bag batting? Oh, the bag batting. Sorry. Uh, got my glasses on and all. Um, yes, I do, but it's only single sided at the moment. I'm waiting for the double sided to come into the country. That'd be great. Um, and I sell the one that I'm using as well. Can I buy a set of templates, Sue Banbury? Yeah. Let me just uh, write your name straight on it, darling. Easy done. There you go, then I don't lose one. <laughs> um, yeah, so Louise, just let me know whether you want the one that I use with that's non-adhesive that you want to just spray or or whether you want to use the one that's one-sided adhesive. Um, you might find maybe G might have the double-sided adhesive one. I'm not sure if she's got any. Um, you're welcome, Sue. So I'm a little bit organised this morning. I've even been out to pick up my son from... Uh, uh, go and take him, so I should say, to his car because he, he went to a party last night and then realised that he wanted to drink. So I had to go and get him. And this is his standard thing. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, look, you can, Jimmy. It'll just be softer. That's all. I would probably maybe uh, something to stiffen it, maybe um, an iron on interfacing. Can I also have a set of templates in Marshall? Of course you can, darling. Pop your name straight on now so I don't miss it and forget. In Marshall. Buckram's a good one, except it's not adhesive. It is thinner though, um, but it's very stiff. The well, buckram I've got is. And it's not, it's not cheap either, just FYI. I find it quite expensive but you know for small projects it's good so we're nearly there we're not far Oops, can I get 
get two meters of single sided. Do you have a bag that I can see uh, that you're making? Uh, is it you're not talking about the basket, Louise? You're talking about the bag, the little bag that I'm doing in the class today. Deb Anderson, I've got a feeling you might already have one. I don't know why. Louise, I'll have to write that down. Good morning, Gidget. Deb Anderson, I'll double check. I won't give you two. How's that sound? Um, and I'll just write down Louise's order before I forget. Louise Hall. The basket. Oh, okay. Um, not a pattern as such, just the video. Um, it's, it's too easy. Um, Louise, honestly. Um, Louise Hall. Two meters feasible. Batting. Oops. Batting here. All right. Easy done. Done. I think. I have probably one of, uh, one of the templates. I think you do, Deb, yes. Yeah, I think you do. All right, let's get on with this. Um, I'll upload this video to YouTube as well, so you can go in and watch it over and over again and won't lose it. I'm going, um, oh, we're, we're doing the weaved basket. Um, which with the templates that I've been selling I promised you a video so I'm doing it that's all right Louise happy Australia day to you Sharon you want the templates as well yep done alrighty now the thread I'm using is just a Rosan thread on the top and a wonderful deco bob in the bottom uh, FYI so nothing special nice stock standard thread everyone will have something similar or like it um, you can use whatever you want. You can use um, rayons, make it shiny, or you can you can use variegated threads. Oh, you've got them already. All right, no worries. That's all right. I'll, you, like I say, you won't get a second lot. This will be available, I mean, the basics of getting the templates um, out onto your fabric is pretty stock standard. So we gave a very brief description. At the start, watch it again from the beginning. Oh, look, to get the... To get the um, fabric onto the wadding, literally you just iron it on. Um, use a spray glue or use a fusible like um, Blizer Fix or Tilda Fix or you know some sort of fusible webbing um, to both sides of the, the um, batting and put your fabric on top and iron it down Then trace out your template onto the top of your fabric and then basically cut out with a pair of scissors. Um, you could probably try with a, a um, what do they call it, a uh, ruler if you wanted to, but it might be a bit, you know, a bit tricky. Um, then 
<clears throat> once you've got them fold, like ironed together and cut out, uh, you basically then do what I'm doing now and uh, stitch around the edge so that it's all sealed, doesn't go fraying everywhere. I think batik work well with these because they don't fray like a normal fabric. You could use just a plain cotton fabric, but you might find it fray a bit more. Hi Yvonne, how you going honey? So it looks like I missed the top of that corner. I'm just going to back stitch there. Um, I'm just going to double check that I missed, didn't miss that corner. I did a little bit, so I'm just going to run over it again. <laughs> That's the beauty of this. There we go, done. Alright. Okay. Cut off the thread, little bits and pieces. I think someone's been using their scissors for something other than fabric, to be honest. Alright. Now, I'm just going to move this out of the way. Ugh. Batik would work, yep. So I've got it stitched down. So the bobbin's a little bit lighter than the top, but it works really well. Cut out with a pair of jack scissors, they'll cut it like button. They do, they do, Terry. They absolutely do. All right, so I'm just going to manipulate this camera so you can see me a little bit better what I'm going to do. So you should have two like this. So one will go, well, they're both going that way. We want one to go one way and one the other. And depending on whether you want um, this in the outside base or on the inside is entirely up to you. I'm going to go like this. I had it the other way the other day, but I think I'm going to go like this. So I put one on top of the other, and I'm just going to sort of push it in underneath each one of those. So the yellow one is going underneath the black one, just like so. It's a bit loose to start with. Just kick it under. Each one as you turn it around, and it's a little bit loose. We'll give it a bit of oops, a bit of a shove there and there. All right, so you've got it under once. Okay, so it's just like that. Then what you do, and this is where it gets you got to have six arms and ten legs, is you get you hold it up in your hand like that. I'm gonna do it this way. See if I can do it this way. You've got that one like that and like that. So that one is going to go under that yellow just like that there. See? And you will need 30,000 clips. And just clip those two together. Then you lift up that one and that yellow one. See those? No, I've got to turn it the way I can see it and I know what I'm doing. I'm doing it back to front. And that one goes under, like that. So you just manipulate it a little. So that one, and then clip it. Same rule applies. That one like that, and clip. Can you see the pattern starting to form? So that one... Because I'm working back to front here, it feels weird. Like that. And you'll notice the basket will start to take shape. You can give that a good shove around after you stitch these together. We're going to sort of manipulate it a little, play with it a little. That like that. Clip the top, that underneath, clip the top, and you just keep going around, that one under there, that one under there, so you're weaving one under, one over. <clears throat> That's over and under. And don't worry about it not sitting quite right yet. It will sit right. It's just because um, I'm doing it back to front. So we're going to go 
that one it stays over there and under like that another clip that one under there and clip that one that's your last one so you're back to your center again all right so you'll notice it started it's now in that shape michelle you've done a mistake did i oh i did too here it is <laughs> it's because i'm working back to front <laughs> don't you love that here it is there it is found it thank you <laughs> get it eventually there we go no wonder it wouldn't sit probably missed one over there i got it <laughs> um so yeah doing it back to front is not easy so that's now sitting like a basket all right now you can push it in and really squish it down and stuff like that if you want to and make it close in a bit I'm quite happy with the way it's sort of sitting so you can now there's different ways of doing you could put a button in each one of these no just no I'm just saying no just because I can what I'm going to do is take it to the machine and I'm going to stitch along the top the whole way around stitch one at like at a time all the way around and it's going to sit just nicely all right so i'm going to adjust the camera um and uh, move this all back i've got stuff i just threw onto the table and there oops drop something oh yeah we all right so let me get this machine back Ugh. here we go Let's see if I can do this with you guys watching. It might be hard. I might just move the camera back a little. Oops, a day's wrong way. There we go. Um, now, I'm going to do it this way. Now, I've got the yellow in. I might just swap that out to the black just because the yellow will really stand out and do a black edge around the top. It won't stand out so much my black bobbin back in and the top thread right where to put it I'm gonna put me black I do just have it there there it is buried it it rolled away on me don't stretch too much <laughs> Yeah, and no, I'm just shoving the machine. It's bending over to pick stuff up when I drop things, and there's no one here to help me pick them up. <laughs> so I'm sort of stuck. I've got to pick it up. All right. All good. Okay. Now, a couple of ways you could do it. You could zigzag the whole way around, or you could do a straight stitch. Either way, it's up to you. Does the machine have a free arm? Uh, yes, it does. It does. It does. Um, it's entirely up to you. Um, go in like this baby push down and you can do one at a time and I'm going to do it as a straight stitch I think it's going to be hard doing the free arm it's not quite deep enough might be pushing it a bit oh no it's going to do just fine I think just don't want that them to cross over on the wrong angle I'm trying to keep them on the right angle I'm going to go straight stitch uh, and put down and start I think I'm going too fast that's my problem just got to slow the machine down and I'm going to go across to the next one And I'm really trying to keep the edges of those top pieces even. So when you undo the, the clip, it'll want to come apart. Yeah. Okay. But you can't have the clip there because that'll be in the way. Pushing that under, putting the foot on it. I'm 
trying to keep them as even as possible. Put my hair in there. That's what happens when you wear it out. And I'm right on the edge of that zigzag, like where the stitch comes in, I'm right on that edge. So a couple of stitches in just to hold it, and then I'll put my notifications just came out. Oh, I did it? Um, and then I'm joining those two end bits together to make them meet. So then I'll move on to the next bit. Take the pin a uh, clip out. You won't get pins in it. You'll need clips. And just make sure that they're even. And again, and you, you can imagine that the smaller one, you might need to, with a small one, actually do buttons or just hand stitch it around. It might be a little bit tricky getting it in the arm of the machine with a small stencil. The bigger, This is a medium. So the bigger stencil might be easier again. I used to worry slow motion up and I realised it is designed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, they are. They're designed to do that. That's right. You just don't want to be going too fast when you want to have a bit of control on where you're going. Alright, so clips come undone. Line her up. Push her under. So, I'm so close. It's not funny. <laughs> Couple of stitches in. Line up that end bit. So you don't have that little bit of yellow kicking out. You don't want that other colour kicking out unnecessarily. What size template do you have? This is the medium done. This one I've got on the machine right now. And you know what I'm like, I never make anything look that easy. Well, except for I get told my free motion quilting looks easy. <laughs> I don't know whether that's a good or bad thing. All right, so I've come back to where I started. I'm actually going to go back over and back stitch there a couple of times and then cut. <laughs> imini, imini. <sighs> she's done but what I do have here is um, like a little bit of thread in between each one now I could one of two things I can trim that off and it'll it'll just see or I could leave it on either way you could also bind it if you wanted to um, I'm happy with leaving it on they're not that long um, if you trim them off you're taking the chance of the thread coming undone so if you don't want that to happen you need to go back and forth at the start and finish of each side but that is how it's done okay if I wanted to I could go around again with a zigzag and make sure all of them are literally touching but it will bring that in on a like a almost like a dome like bring it in more if you want it that shape, you can. I'm happy with the way it is. And those little bit of stitches in between are actually stopping it from going any further. So that, that is how you put it together. It's that easy. Um, like I say, I think the hardest part was getting the, the three layers together and cutting it out and making sure you didn't overcut and stuff like that. So you just cut on the line um, that you've drawn and, uh, and, and trim it out and zigzag the edges and voila very cute isn't it so that'd be a nice little one too that might that could actually replace oh little my clips my clips yeah there we go nice clips there's a p 
pig. Why is there a pig? I always wondered why I've got a pig in there. So yeah, you can pop little things in there if you want to. Put your threads in there, whatever you like. Um, you could glue it around. You could hot glue them together. You could also do that if you prefer that. You could hot glue it easily. Buttons, whatever you like. Going to have to give, uh, giving, going to give that a go today. Good, Heather. I look forward to seeing photos online. But there you go. So that is your basket. All right, guys. So I'm going to be back at, I think it's one o'clock. And um, if you want to order those um, um, uh, templates, let me know. Uh, Louise, I think you said that you've already got one. Adorable. I need to rewatch as I'm late to the party. That's all right, Eliza. Um, but yeah, it, it's not a very hard thing to do. Um, I think the, I mean, besides cutting out, I think just keeping them together that at the top was um, a little bit a bit underneath the, the uh, needle but you know in the end it didn't take me more than 10 minutes to, to put it around the top there all right so there you go that's a little basket okay so um, at four o'clock today oh well no I've fallen over um, it is cute isn't it yeah it's cute there you go very cute and I did, I changed it around because I think the other day I had the dark one on the inside and then I had more yellow on the outside. I went, no. The other thing that'll do too is if you bring it closer, it will also um, change the, the shape of that top bit. Um, sweet eyes, bro. I think I ordered one, but I'm not sure if I have, if I haven't pleased my having Sue Simpson. I think you have, but I'll check. Yep. It's very cute, yeah. So we've got a, um, another live, I think, at 1 o'clock, and then I think 2.30 I'm on the classroom, and I'm doing uh, part one of this little fella. No worries, Cassandra. And uh, how, to, how to make this little bag. Could you turn it inside out? Damn good question. Probably could, because I've got them all sewn together. Eh, 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 eh. Here. I don't want to break anything. Yeah, baby, you could. Ah, look, it doesn't like me for doing it, but I can. There you go. See, the other way around. So you can. <laughs> I like it the other way. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so uh, what else was I going to say? Oh, and four o'clock today, we have live sales. So um, be ready for that. I will have some more special. It is very cute little basket um, and uh, very easy to do. And like I say, if you want to have them closer, it's just going to bring the top of it more inwards. All right. So it'll it'll dome it in the top. And either way is right. There's no wrong. It's all good. OK. Thanks, guys. We'll see you soon. About one o'clock. Um, hope you enjoy the classroom and um, and, uh, yep, you'll see me later on. I'll be here with bells on. Bells on, baby. <laughs> Thanks, guys. See you later. Bye.